There are many different ways that people build and organize their communities across the world. Some places have buildings packed closely together. Others are spread far apart, with lots of open land in between. Some follow rivers, roads, or coastlines in long, winding lines. These different shapes and layouts are called settlement patterns, and they tell us a lot about how people live, what they need, and how the environment has shaped their choices. There are three main types of settlement patterns that geographers study. Clustered, scattered, and linear. Let's take a closer look at each one. A clustered settlement is when people live close together in one area. This is common in cities or towns, where homes, stores, schools, and roads are all built near each other. People settle this way when there are important resources nearby, like fresh water or lots of jobs, and when it makes sense to be close to the things they need every day. Clustered settlements can become very large and busy. They offer access to services, public transportation, and entertainment, but they can also come with challenges like traffic, pollution, and overcrowding. One of the most well-known examples of a clustered settlement is Tokyo, Japan. The Tokyo metropolitan area, which includes several nearby cities, is home to over 37 million people. That's more than the entire population of Canada, all living in one connected region. The population density is so high that if you divided the land evenly among everyone in the city, each person would have less than three square meters to themselves. That's smaller than the average bedroom. But despite the small space, people choose to live there because of the many opportunities it offers. Work, culture, transportation, and more. Now let's look at the opposite, a scattered settlement. This is when homes and buildings are spread far apart, with lots of land in between. You'll often see this in rural areas or places with difficult environments, like mountains, forests, or deserts. People in scattered settlements may live on farms, near lakes, or in small remote communities. They often rely on the land for food or resources, and they need more space to support that way of life. Canada is a great example of a country with many scattered settlements. Although Canada is one of the largest countries in the world, it has a population density of only four people per square kilometer on average. That means there's a lot of open space. Most Canadians live in cities along the U.S. border. But once you travel north, communities become smaller, more spread out, and harder to access. These areas offer peace, nature, and space, but they can also make it harder to reach schools, hospitals, or stores. The third pattern is called linear settlement. This is when buildings and homes are arranged in a line, usually following a feature like a river, a road, or a coastline. People build this way to stay close to transportation routes, water, or trade. A linear settlement might look like one long street with houses, shops, and schools lined up on either side. This pattern makes it easy to travel along the main route, but it can also make the community feel stretched out or disconnected. In the United States, many communities developed along the Mississippi River and the Great Lakes. These areas offered access to trade, water, and transportation. And as a result, many towns and cities formed in long, connected lines along the shores. Even today, cities like Chicago, Cleveland, and Buffalo still follow this pattern, shaped by the natural features that first brought people there. So, to review, 
A clustered settlement has people living close together, often in cities or towns. A scattered settlement has people living far apart, usually in rural or remote areas. And a linear settlement has people living in a line, often following a river, road, or coastline. These patterns are shaped by the land, by natural resources, and by the choices people make about how and where to live. Now, here's a challenge for you. You're going to create your own version of each settlement pattern, clustered, scattered, and linear. On a sheet of paper, draw three blank spaces. In each space, you'll draw a realistic version of one settlement pattern, using symbols to represent important features, like homes, roads, schools, stores, natural areas, and anything else that makes the settlement feel complete. For each drawing, you'll also need to include a legend that explains the symbols you used, a short written reflection that explains why your drawing fits the pattern, your thoughts on what it might be like to live in that type of settlement, including any benefits or challenges it might have. And your drawings should be fully colored for extra detail. Remember, this isn't about drawing perfect pictures. It's about thinking like a geographer. Why do people settle this way? What are the benefits? What are the challenges? Use your creativity and your critical thinking to design settlements that make sense. Once you've completed all three drawings, you'll be ready to share your ideas with your classmates and explain how your communities were designed. Good luck and enjoy creating your communities.